We are previewing the 2022 college football season here on the Summit, and it is a privilege today to be joined by Josh Anderson, who's the head football coach at Dakota State. Our stop is in Madison, South Dakota, and Coach, getting ready for the 23 season already. First off, it's nice to talk about football, and I want to say thanks for stopping by the program. 2022, six and four the record. You close out the season with three consecutive wins, four of your last five, maybe a little hiccup there against presentation, uh, or the second half of the season would have just been great. Can you talk about last year and bring us into where we are, and, and is there momentum carried into this year? Well, absolutely. Uh, first of all, I agree. Uh, I, I enjoy talking football year round and we just came off of spring practices and, and my coaches and myself just finished up and wrapped up our spring junior recruiting. And so now we're coming into the summer and we'll get into summer workouts. So there's just always different phases uh, throughout the year. And, um, you know, it's just exciting things in front of us with school being out in the summer and the nice weather, obviously, and then being able to uh, wa watch this new field get finished up. Um, and that's not even our main field. And the one they did is just absolutely beautiful. And so, um, yeah, as uh, as we get rolling here with six and four, we, we did have some quarterback issues uh, with some injuries. Some main things uh, were a lot of the protection calls from myself, not the offensive lineman. Uh, there was just some things that we needed to change up in order to protect and to help our offensive linemen and to protect our quarterbacks. And so you're right, the back half of the season, the last five games, we did have a little hiccup with uh, – with presentation, but that's why you play the games. It was one of those situations where if any one of nine things would have went different, we'd have won. If you look at the stats on paper, we absolutely destroyed them, but we didn't win. And, you know, that, unfortunately, that's how it goes sometimes. And so, yeah, we finished four and one to, to wrap up the season at six and four and finished second in the conference, uh, still going through four quarterbacks. So I'm really proud of our coaches and I'm really proud of our athletes. Uh, they always just kept their heads up. They knew that we were a good enough team. We just had to stick together. We couldn't do things apart. And so the culture and the, and the, and the leadership of the team is fantastic. And that's how we got to six and four after starting two and three. Well, Coach, and, and you should have so many players back from last season's squad. You look at, at the roster from last year and, I mean, a lengthy roster as a football roster will be. I saw five seniors, four juniors, and then everyone else, freshmen and sophomores. So talk about that, even though it was a young program. And again, winning record with a young program. But still, you've been able to build into them and so into that group. Yeah, and I think the reason that you see a lot of a, a short number of seniors and a short number of juniors is I'm not necessarily sure – what football season they're in. I know where they're at academically, but with the with the Rona redshirt year, I call it, and then other guys have taken a redshirt year, that's two free years. Um, so we could end up having, you know, a bunch of sixth year seniors, fifth year seniors, and all they've done is four, uh, play four seasons. So it, it's hard to say. I'm constantly trying to figure things out with guys and they're, and they're unsure. They're like, well, I could, I could move on. I could be done. I think I could do this or I could come back for my master's. And so Basically, I just tell them that, hey, let's just let things play out and see how it works. Um, if you're a senior, if you could be a senior, we'll honor you on senior day. And if we have to honor you twice, <laughs> even better. You know, why not? You, you've put in a lot of time and effort. That's the least I can do. And so that's where some of the, you know, the, the lack of numbers in seniors and juniors come from. Not necessarily the retention. Our retention is, is pretty good. I would love it for it to be better. But we do have we do have a young team and we do have a young crop coming up and they got a lot of playing time last year. So now we have a young uh, a young team with veteran experience. And so that's the key thing. The experience is something that you can't coach. You obviously have to go through it. You have to see you have to see the players flying at you and, and quick decisions being made. And, you know, and any kind of fake and your eyes are going here and you got to read here. And, and the discipline comes through that experience. And so. That's where we need to keep the retention up so we can keep guys that have the kind of experience in the playing time in order for us to have the kind of success in the future that we're going to have. Coach, there are a number of players obviously coming back on the offensive side of the ball. Let's talk about offense right now. You said it from the beginning, four quarterbacks that that saw a fair amount of time last year. And uh, I know that, that you know you want the consistency that, and you talked about some of the adjustments that you made going into the second half of the season. Uh, I don't know if any one of those quarterbacks stood out to you in the spring game that you just had and, and also a uh, pretty good play from one of your sophomores in, in Tice Ortman is uh, led the way for you with the rushing attack last year. Yeah, as far as the quarterbacks went, Zach Brooks was our starter. He's from Wisconsin. Uh, super football knowledge uh, and just understanding of the offense and how things need to be done. 
and he ended up he ended up just his, his shoulder, his back, his neck. He got beat up pretty good, but he's so stinking tough that we had to basically drag him out and, and hold him out on purpose. And so he's just a tough young man. Um, Aiden Aiden Jungers is from North Dakota. He came in and played a couple games for us. Won a game. The game that he started against Mayville, he 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 did a phenomenal job and, and did well for us there. Josiah Vitali. Started a game against Iowa Wesleyan and won that game for us. And he's a true freshman from Nevada. And then we had Cam McKeon from Texas who who started a couple games and got a got a good amount of playing time as well. Uh, we did end up winning one of those Iowa Wesleyan games, and then we played Dickinson for the other one and and came up a little share. But uh, yeah, we got we got four quarterbacks with some with some good game experience, and then we have a, a really good crop of freshmen coming in as well. So we're we're pretty excited because of the experience we have a quarterback and the young guys coming in to provide some competition as well. And then you got Tice Ortman, who, who because we had four quarterbacks go down, and there was one game where I, <laughs> excuse me, I was on the sideline contemplating if, if one more thing, because I only had, I only had one last quarterback dressed out, and I thought, man, I got two guys. I got Cole Siliuson, a receiver, and, and Tice Ortman at running back that I could put at, <laughs> at quarterback if needed that could at least – get the cadence and get the get the protections called and would have a general understanding of it and so we were we were pretty close at one point um but tice tice is just an all-around everything kind of guy i mean he could return kicks punts he could actually play some quarterback if needed um and he's just a phenomenal running back he only played in half the games just because he had some some really fluke things that happened to him uh with some injuries to his leg and he still made second team all conference and uh it's just a fantastic running back. He's strong. He's athletic. He catches the ball well out out in out in uh, traffic, so we can put him out at receiver if we wanted him to. Um, and just a phenomenal leader too. So super happy to have him for two more years. We're speaking now with Josh Anderson from Dakota State here on the Summit as uh, we are on Midwest Sports Net. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Previewing the 2023 college football season today, and I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate that very much. Uh, defense last year, and Coach, it, it seemed like your defense really uh, th th did its job throughout the year. But again, as the season went on, stepped up as well, uh, giving up only six points in the last two games, shutting out uh, Waldorf in the finale. And a couple of players that stood out to me, you had J.J. Beck, a sophomore linebacker, had 101 tackles on the season. He seemed to be everywhere on the field. And, and then Cody Brown, too, another sophomore, defensive end, and nine sacks, 16 and a half tackles for loss, a couple of interceptions, forced fumble, uh, recognized as one of the nominees for the Cliff Harris Award as well. So it seems like uh, you have a, a good, solid foundation to build on upon this year. Absolutely. J.J. Beck at one time was leading the NAIA in tackles, and Cody Brown is just very difficult to block and somebody that you better be aware of where he's at. Makes it wide open for the rest of the defensive line and some of the schemes and, and, and blitz concepts that our coach can call. Coach Sensabaugh does a fantastic job of leading the defense and getting them energized and getting them excited. And I'll tell you what, our defense, the reason that they didn't have the production the first half of the season as they did in the second half, was because of me was because of the offense and i'll, I'll admit that 100 our it, it came down to with watching our quarterbacks getting hurt and i had to switch up some schemes in the middle of the season in order to take care of that like we talked about it just ultimately came down to um after a particular game i came home and just sulked for a while and just tried to figure life out in our football <laughs> world and realized our best offense was our defense and our second best offense was our special teams. And here's how it worked out the last five games was we were just trying to get first downs on offense. You know, hopefully the more the merrier. Obviously, we wanted to score. You never have to tell anybody to score a touchdown or score some points. It's like telling somebody to swing in baseball and shoot in basketball. You just don't have to tell them those things. So our whole concept in that second half of the season was simply let's just not turn the ball over. Let's get some first downs. And there were so many times that we then ended a series with a kick. Obviously, a PAT is, is the best because <laughs> he scored a touchdown. And if we get close enough, a field goal is awesome. We had a great kicker punter. But if we got to punt it, I, I'm telling you, there were so many times we'd punt the ball and get it back with 10 more yards than where we ended on offense. Take over. And so that ended up being the absolute best thing for our defense, our special teams, and then, of course, our offense. And once I was able to just – let the clouds of my uh, whining ability, you know, feeling sorry for myself and why we're losing and um, 
it was hard. It was a hard pill to swallow to realize, like, you know what? I'm the problem. I need to – I was trying to do too many things that we just weren't good at offensively in the first five games, and it put us in such bad situations, and our defense was constantly being called on to to dig us out of the hole, and it just wasn't fair to them. Well, they clearly responded well as the second half of the season went on. And again, you take a three-game winning streak into 2023 where you're going to be playing on a different field this year. You played uh, last season, last the last year on, on the Trojan field there, and then you're in the process of, of construction for your new facility. In the meantime, you get to play at uh, the track and soccer complex this year and playing on turf. It's exciting because we're all spring. Uh, well, first of all, throughout the fall, you can see them. You can see them preparing and making that field and the track area up there ready to go. And the lights were coming in. And I think they could have laid the turf on the track before winter came. But you know, smart to just wait until after all the snow and ice cleared out. Mm -hmm. And so it happened during spring ball. Then, so if they would go out to practice, there'd be a new, you know, something. And then as soon as they started laying the turf, it was just so exciting. And and now they've laid the top layer of uh, the track. And so it's it's crazy how fast they work and how well they work in that construction crew area and how, how quick they, they make things happen. And so to play on that field, and it'll be the same thing this year, so we'll play a year on that north field, the track soccer complex, while they're making the the football stadium and the concourse and, and, the, and the new turf field. So we're going to have two turf fields back-to-back, -back, uh, both going north and south. I mean, we're our, – our president – told our athletic director to put together a, a sweet athletic plan. I, I can't imagine she said sweet. She's incredibly smart. So she, I'm sure, said, you know, don't don't mess around. We don't do things halfway here. You put together a complex and let's go get it happen. Let's go make it happen. And then our and then our president, Dr. Yose Marie Griffiths, she hired John Schemmel to run our foundation. And then he hired an All-American staff. And within a year, we got the money raised to get going on this big project we got and it's it's off and running and now the excitement and the involvement and people wanting to you know be in, be involved and, and help out now it's just it's just so much fun to be a part of this and that all came down from our president and our Jeff Dittman and, and then John Schemmel our foundation and, and in, in those three ways just amazing things are happening here we're, we're building division one athletic complexes and in and will be top in some of the division two areas like it's it's fantastic especially for this area that we're at with all the athletes that surround us within a four-hour radius it's crazy and, and now the interest is going way up our athletics are going way up um our academics has always been the highest so now we're we're chasing our academics and we're doing it so it's fun and it's exciting Coach, you've got me excited now. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for you to get to see that. This is going to be fun to watch this process play out and and know it. Uh, it it's it's a transitional year from where you're you're actually you know playing the games, but I, I'm, it's just a, it's another good year. And the schedule gets underway not that far from now. I think it's appropriate that you're our first uh, first college football preview for this year because you're going to be playing one of the first games, if not the first game of the season. And on August 26th, so you go down play your rival, hour down the road, uh, get to go to Mitchell and get to Dakota Wesleyan over there. Then August 31st, Ag Bowl again, play that at home against uh, D3 Lacrosse. And then the season is – it's a different season this year now in North Star because uh, uh, Iowa Wesleyan and Presentation both uh, have uh, discontinued their programs. And so it's a double round robin look for conference play. Eight conference games there and you get to see everyone twice. So can you talk about the start to the schedule there? Well, yeah, I, I'll tell you too. It's it's very unfortunate for Presentation College and Iowa Wesleyan University because it affects everybody from their president on down to the athletes and the you know and the students. And I just hate seeing anything like that. Or you know my my colleagues and and the you know the student athletes having to find new places. It's it's frustrating. It's hard enough to find a place to go, but then when you got to do it all over again. Yeah. I just feel terrible for them, and obviously they have their circumstances. But uh, then that did put a wrinkle in our schedule. We got to play everybody twice, which is fine. I mean, the NFL does it. It's and it's as long as we got the games. You know what I mean? As long as we can fill a schedule and we got the games, we'll play everybody three times if we had to. That's not a big deal to me. I don't really care if anybody tries to recruit against that. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> you know, it's it makes no difference. You play the games, you got to win every game, it, it, whether you play them once or twice, and so. Um, just the fact that we have a schedule, we've worked hard 
in our conference, our commissioner, our athletic directors, and our head football coaches to make this work and make it happen. Uh, I'm sure all the other sports have their issues as well, and they're doing the same thing. They're finding a way. And rather than just sitting around complaining about it and waiting for somebody else to do it, you, you make things work. You get all and get the job done. So uh, we'll we'll take we'll take it how it comes uh, this season with the conference. And honestly, we'll see how it works and if we can do better or, or try to find some other universities to to come on into our conference or whatever the future holds. I know that we have the right people working for the best way to do things. So I'm not really too worried about that, honestly, even in the slightest. But, yes, playing the first game of the season, that's one thing that Dakota Wesleyan and Dakota State try to do every year, um, you know, try to be that that kickoff game, at least the highlight of the football season. And Midco broadcasts it live, and they do a fantastic job. It's always a great game because it's a rivalry game. It's the first game. Everybody's healthy. <laughs> and uh, it's just a lot of fun because there's so many athletes on each team that either played, you know, played with each other in high school or at least yeah. know each other. And so even the families and friends that come to watch, you know, maybe one team know a bunch of the athletes on the other team. And um, it, it's a fun, fun environment to coach in, to play in, and then just be at for a game. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Dakota State at Dakota Wesleyan this year. That's August 26th, and the season, well, it will be here before we know it. Coach Josh Anderson, success to you all this season and to the Trojans building on last season and, and heading into your 15th year with the program. Also, congratulations on the longevity there. And, and again, success to you all. Thank you for taking time with us today here on the Summit. I really appreciate you even asking. Thank you for having me on.